Having interviewed over 700 business and thought leaders all over the world during the last two years, I reckon I've seen the good and bad of communication <laughs> with a lot of mediocrity. And because the world has changed, that mustn't continue to be the case. Welcome to this BVTV trilogy coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. Whilst all around us, there are new communication opportunities such as social media, podcasts, ebooks, YouTube, blogging, not everyone has the confidence and capability to use them effectively, especially as regards storytelling. Now, my guest today helps leaders be better communicators. So let's go to Australia and say hello to Gina Ballerin. Hello, Gina. Hello, Malcolm. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm sure it's lovely and cool in Australia because we, as we're recording this, I've just settled down from yesterday, the hottest day ever in the UK at four, over 40 degrees uh, centigrade. I'm not saying it's 104 Fahrenheit. Oof, dear me. I can imagine Lots. that it's rather sweaty over there. I must confess it's cool and damp in Australia. So perhaps we're actually having a reversal of fortunes. But I yes. can say, having lived in the UK, when the temperature was 25 degrees and people were complaining it was too hot, I waited until they could experience 45 degrees. Now you can definitely say it's too hot. That's de definitely. Gina, in my opening piece, I remarked on my experience of the past two years about the lack of communication capability amongst leaders. What are your thoughts here? And what do you think are the key missing skills? Before a leader can communicate clearly, they need to understand what happens in the hearts and minds of their audience. And one of the biggest challenge is that leaders often think that the communication message is about them. It's not. It's about the people that they're talking to. They think that the important part of the message is about what they want to put out to the audience. It's not. It's about what the audience is going to hear. They think that it's more important to have what they're presenting look good. It's not. It's more important that what they're saying touches hearts and minds. So the key element of communication for any leader, no matter what format you do it in, is to be able to understand your audience first and foremost. And as marketers, you and I both know that the most important thing for a marketer to get right is to be able to target your audience in a place where they're receptive to it. Now, let's look for a moment at an ideal scenario where leaders are communicating to their audience. Let's imagine they're up on a stage at an event. They've got all of their company around them. Everyone is absolutely hanging on to their every word and they have every opportunity to get their message across effectively. Well, in this scenario, unless you're an expert public speaker, the chances are that you as a leader are going to feel a little bit afraid. It's only natural. And the bigger the company gets, the harder it is to put that message across. The key element I will say to anyone who sits in an environment where you're communicating to your audience is it's not about you, it's about them. Mm. So I'm a speaker, but I'm also a marketer and I'm also a writer. So I'm fortunate to be able to see this from multiple different angles. Mostly marketers think about audience, message, positioning, execution, distribution. And it comes naturally to us. We know that a different message is going to go out on LinkedIn to a message that will go out on Twitter or Facebook or, you know, one of the short media format issues. Every platform has its individual way of communicating. So let's go back to our CEO standing on a stage talking to their audience. We know that they're probably going to be nervous. So their body is going to contract. They're going to start to want to choke off their voice box. There are tactics that one can use just to improve your communication skills by opening and expanding your body and lowering your center of gravity and lowering your voice. And that's just one example of how leaders can improve their communication. But mm. other ways- I don't think people should, sorry to interrupt there, Gina. I don't think people should be um, frightened that they feel fear because um, it, it's normal, isn't it? And like you, I've done these things all over the world and big, big thousands of plus audiences there. And yes, it doesn't matter how many times you've done it, 
you still have that little churn in it. And I'm going to name drop here. Um, I don't know if we can remember the singer Engelbert Humperdinck, but um, <laughs> he's, he's, he said to me, well, Malcolm, uh, you know, the day that I go out onto stage and I'm not feeling a bit fearful is the day I've lost, I'm losing respect for my audience. Wow, that's a beautiful and very appropriate quote. I think mm. there's a difference between enabling and debilitating nerves. Fortunately, I'm one of those people who gets enabling nerves, and it sounds like you do the same. Um, and I can't make judgments for every CEO or every leader who's, who turns up on a stage. But what I can say is that taking yourself out of it and taking your ego out of it is key mm. to being able to communicate with an audience. And that applies whether you're standing on a stage, whether you're sending an email, whether you're writing a white paper or a blog post or even a message on LinkedIn. Your audience has to come first. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways people can do that is to make sure that they're telling stories that resonate appropriately with their audience. When they yeah. do that, people are convinced, they're engaged, and more importantly, they understand what the benefits are. And I think that's what great marketers do and great communications coaches do as well, is we help people understand not what they're saying and how they're saying it, although that's a key element of the job, but why they're saying it. And more importantly, why anyone should care. Yeah, I, I think people judge things as to whether they are a good communicator or effective communicator in, in the wrong way. They, they tend to think that um, the more rah-rah they are, then the better it is. But that's not necessarily the case, as you're quite rightly saying, isn't it? That's a beautiful example. I was recently working with a client who is UK-based, and their CEO is a wonderful man, highly intelligent, but not quite as charismatic as an American audience would expect. Mm -hmm. And the person who was introducing the day was a very charismatic American woman in front of a very charismatic American audience. But we had to be very careful to craft her message and to coach her in the way that she was producing and communicating to the audience so that she didn't have a rah-rah hyped up experience to bring the CEO on who then was far more practical and pragmatic and, and low level. And so that has to be very, very carefully balanced. We managed yeah. it, but it wasn't easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that you know, it differs, as you say, around the world. And I presented sales training events in a, a, across America, which is you know, calls to Newcastle in some ways there. Uh, and um, but you know, it's people go to to listen for ideas, just to go back and say, what am I taking back from it? And uh, Time and time and time again, that's what people say to me. Oh, I've got four or five ideas from that, Malcolm. And that makes me feel good, but it makes them feel it's been val of value. Well, that tells me you're doing two things that good speakers are able to do. The first is you're able to use that three, the power of three, in a way that you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then yeah. you tell them what you told them, which is a great yeah. way of helping people get to the key point. But the last element there is be focused on one single key message that people can take away. When you know that and you're clear on that, your audience will be clear too. Thanks, Gina. Now let's give viewers and listeners details of your URL, your website address, which viewers you can see on the screen behind me. But for listeners, let me spell it out. It's all the W's, all the W's dot. Verbalistics, which is V-E-R-B-A-L-L-I-S-T-I-C-S. Verbalistics, I love that word. Verbalistics.com.au. Gina's book is called The Secret Army, Leadership, Marketing, and the Power of People. Check it out and order it today through Amazon. Now, there's one key aspect that far too many businesses are really poor at, and that is storytelling. Gina is a passionate corporate storyteller. So that's where we're going to in episode two. Are you up for that, Gina? Absolutely.